Now, I said at the start that we were really interested in applying mass spec to organic molecules, and indeed we are. So let's do a little bridge discussion here, just to start adding in potential complexity of mass spec. And let's think about bromine. Now, of course, bromine is a halogen. You love bromine. Bromine has two stable isotopes. One has a mass of 79, the other a mass of 81, so we'll depict them as so. And these are in approximately a one-to-one -one ratio for the purposes of our discussions. They are in a one-to-one -one ratio. So when we do a mass spec of bromine, we will see, as you would expect, a peak at 79 and a peak at 81. But of course, those of you who know your chemistry know that, well, bromine actually doesn't exist as bromine atoms, as we saw for boron and chromium. Bromine is actually present as Br2. So when we vaporize our bromine and we slap it into the mass spec, we're not vaporizing Br, we're vaporizing Br2. And so this is not just the only part of the mass spec that we see. We also see a cluster of ions up here at 158, one that's twice as high at 160, and one that is the same height as the 158 at 162. And these are due to Br2. Now, this illustrates various cute things. The first thing, before I do any more calculations, is the idea of fragmentation. And we're going to see this with our organic molecules a lot. When you slap Br2 into the mass spec, some of these Br2s, most of them will just lose an electron and plow on through as Br2+. But as they're plowing through and being accelerated towards the magnet, then they can fragment, they can break apart. And of course, the obvious thing for Br2 to break apart would be to break into individual bromine atoms, or in this case, bromine cations. Okay, so once you get past the simplistic atomic elements, you're not just going to see the molecules, but you'll see fragments of molecules as well. And that idea is one to take into the organic um, and right at the front of your mind. But now let's think about where we get these three funny peaks in that one to two to one ratio. And the answer is, of course, that Br2, this innocuous, seemingly innocent little Br2, could be one of four things. You could have that both of the bromine atoms in Br2 are bromine 79, and two times 79 is 158. So this 158 here is due to the 79Br, 79Br cation. OK, however, half of bromine atoms are bromine 81. So you could also have some molecules in which one of the atoms, the first atom is 79 bromine and the second one is 81 bromine and that has a mass of 160. Or you could have different molecules in which the first one is 81 bromine and the second one is 79 bromine. I keep saying molecules. These are, of course, cations that also has a mass of 160. And then down here, the last possibility is where both of the bromines are 162. Now, each of these possibilities is as likely as the other because 79 bromine and 81 bromine each constitute half the bromine atoms. So that's why we see peaks at 158, 160, 162, because those are the three possible masses of these isotope masses put together. But because we can get the one at 160 in two different ways, it is twice as high as the other. Hopefully that all made nice sense. And just to reinforce it, let's do a related but more complicated example. Related in that we're going to talk about chlorine. And you don't get any more related to bromine than chlorine. So just like bromine, chlorine has two isotopes. And of course, chlorine is the example used by teachers all around the world to start talking about isotopes and different abundances and the atomic mass. Because chlorine, just like bromine, has two isotopes. Those isotopes are two mass units apart, in this case, 35 and 37. But unlike bromine, the relative amounts of these two isomers of chlorine is three to one. 75% are chlorine 35, 25% are chlorine 37. So when we take the mass spec of chlorine, the lowest thing that we see are two peaks, one at 35 and one at 37. 
and the one at 35 is three times higher than the one at 37, representing these relative abundances. But of course, as was the case for bromine, these peaks are not representative of what went in the vaporizer. These are what you get after fragmentation of Cl2 plus cations. So we're also going to get three peaks further up the spectrum. One at 70, one at 72, and one at 74. And again, these are going to be due to cations deriving from the Cl2 molecule. OK, now, of course, you can guess where we're going with this. How do we make 70? Well, 70 is the Cl2 cation that's got 235 Cl atoms in it because 35 plus 35 is 70. And so that's why I've drawn this line in green, because it's made up solely of the green colored isotope. Then the next possibility is that one of the atoms is 35 and the other one is 37. And of course, there are two options for that, 35 at start and then 37 or 37 and then 35. Whichever way round it is, is the mass of 72. So that's the 72 line, which I've drawn as half blue and half green because one of the atoms in it is the blue colored isomer. One is the green colored isomer. Don't you love my color coordination? Finally, 74. Of course, 74 is two times 37. And that's the 37 CL, 37 CL cation at 74. OK, so we can identify relatively easily, I hope, where the masses 70, 72 and 74 come from, knowing that the two isomers of chlorine are 35 and 37. What's sneakier, though, is where these relative heights come from. The 70 has got a relative height of 9, the 72, 6, and the 74, a relative height of 1. Now, of course, that should make sense because you've got a whole lot more 35s than 37s, so you should have a whole lot more of them. The cation has got two 35s versus the cation has got two 37s. And, of course, the one that has 35 and 37 should be in between. But where do these numbers come from? And I'm going to say where they come from, and if you've done probability, um, or statistics, you can see where it comes from relatively easily. If you haven't, I hope it will still make sense. OK, so going to this one of 70, we've got the first atom is chlorine 35 and three quarters of chlorine atoms are chlorine 35. So three quarters of the time, the first atom will be chlorine 35. And then we got another chlorine 35 as the second one. And three quarters of the time, the second chlorine atom will be chlorine 35. So the chances of getting 35 at the start and 35 at the second are three quarters times three quarters which is 9 over 16. So 9 of the 16 possibilities will be the double chlorine 35. Oh, look, and that's the height of 9. Now let's think about this one. We've got chlorine 35 as the first, well, three quarters of the time, chlorine 35 is the first, but now we've got chlorine 37, and only a quarter of the time will chlorine 37 be the second atom. So it's going to be three quarters times a quarter. And then similarly down here, just flipped, Quarter of the time, chlorine 37 will be the first atom. Three quarters of the time, chlorine 35 will be the second atom. So it's quarter times three quarters. Either way you do it, comes to a total of 6 over 16. It's 3 over 16 plus 3 over 16, which is 6 over 16. And that's the 6. And then finally, 37 Cl, 37 Cl. Well, a quarter of the time, the first atom will be chlorine 37, a quarter of the time. The second atom will be chlorine 37. So that's a quarter times a quarter, which is 1 over 16. So uh, an example that illustrates, first of all, the application of the mass spec to the whole isotopic separation and definitions that we talked about for quite a few years, but then a starting indication of the fun that you can get from mass spec. In this case, most of the fun just being associated with the mass of the isotopes, but a little bit of the fun associated with fragmentation. So the next set of movies that will, of course, complete the module are all about mass spec applied to organic molecules. Hope you enjoy it. I know some of you enjoy the little puzzle part of some of the spectroscopy and spectrometry and mass spec certainly can provide that.